joining us today for our systems engineering and engineering management program uh, webinar for Penn State Great Valley. Before we begin, I'd just like to just give a friendly reminder to everyone, please mute your computers. Please mute your, your microphones. We would really appreciate that. Thank you. So as we begin, I would like to introduce Dr. Neil Ergen. She is our Associate Professor of Systems Engineering and the professor in charge of our Systems Engineering and Engineering Management programs. So without further ado, I'm going to turn the mic over to Dr. Ergen. Okay, thank you, Denita. Hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Nina Ergin. Uh, I'll be today talking about the systems engineering and engineering management programs. Uh, so let's move on to the next slide. Just a second, please. Okay. Yeah, uh, in our uh, Great Valley campus, we have a couple of programs. Uh, we have the systems engineering, engineering management, software engineering, information science, and data analytics. We also provide certificates in systems engineering, cybersecurity, and data analytics. Uh, today, my focus will be on the systems engineering and engineering management programs. And I'll also talk about the certificate in systems engineering. Uh, before I get into the program details, I'd like to briefly talk about our engineering division faculty. Uh, we have a broad range of faculty uh, background uh, who are in software engineering, systems engineering, information science, and data analytics. Uh, our faculty are comfortable with interdisciplinary uh, research and they do collaborate with each other. And I also uh, want to emphasize the fact that uh, Penn State University follows a, a scholar teacher model where uh, our faculty are active researchers and they do uh, transform their applied research into uh, teaching uh, our working professionals. So they are comfortable with uh, transforming theoretical knowledge to uh, working professionals uh, and uh, how you can use it in your work environment. Uh, and a little bit background, uh, our faculty are leaders in their disciplines. Uh, some of our uh, faculty are book authors, some are society fellows, some are journal editors, but most importantly, all of our faculty are active researchers. They do research for DOD, Siemens, uh, AstraZeneca, IBM, NSF and many other uh, research institutes. Uh, so I want to emphasize that. Uh, so you'll be able to interact with uh, faculty who are leaders in their disciplines. Uh, we also have uh, in our Penn State Great Valley campus, a couple of uh, research labs. Uh, one of them is the big data lab uh, where we have doctors Q, Barb, Sirinivasan, Negaban, uh, conduct research on data science and apply uh, data analytics to uh, different applications, including social media analysis, politics, security, market research, and many more. We have a software and systems engineering research group, uh, doctors Neil, Sangwan, myself, and Sirinivasan, uh, looking into socio-technical aspects of large-scale engineering systems. We also have the problem solving research group uh, led by Dr. Yablakov, uh, where researchers uh, look into engineering design and uh, technical problem solving research. Uh, in addition to the research labs, we have Rev Up uh, at Great Valley, uh, which is a center for entrepreneurship. So if you are interested in engineering design, uh, entrepreneurship, and maybe uh, in future, you are looking into a startup company. We do have uh, support for those activities. We have a state-of-the-art makerspace as well as uh, support for innovation uh, facilitation. Uh, so let's first look into our systems engineering program. The system engineering discipline is uh, pretty much dominated uh, by uh, the industry challenges, and it's more focused on uh, designing, defining, uh, developing, and operating uh, large uh, complex engineering systems. It's also concerned with understanding the big picture, as well as balancing management and technical aspects of uh, large engineering complex uh, systems. In our system engineering program, uh, we have uh, 30 
six credits. 18 of those are core courses. Uh, those are required uh, to be taken by all of our students. And we have 18 uh, credits allocated for electives. Let's look at some of the core courses. I'll briefly talk about what each of these courses cover. In our engineering analysis course, we look at analytical uh, mathematical tools for solving complex engineering problems. In systems engineering course, uh, we look at the system engineering process, the life cycle uh, aspects of complex engineering systems, uh, as well as introduction to system science uh, to understand uh, large complex systems. Uh, in our creativity and problem solving course, uh, we look at uh, designing and understanding team dynamics, as well as problem solving techniques for uh, complex system problems. Uh, we also have two simulation and modeling courses uh, in systems engineering uh, model based uh, approaches are critical. So we have probabilistic modeling and deterministic modeling, uh, where we teach some tools and techniques for integrated system analysis uh, to solve some uh, complex engineering problems. Uh, so once you are done with the core courses, uh, you need to pick up six electives uh, from a prescribed list of uh, electives. Uh, just briefly talk about uh, some of the ones that are uh, relevant to systems engineering. So we have requirements engineering where you look at requirements analysis and elicitation techniques. We have the systems thinking where we teach tools and techniques for understanding the big picture of complex systems. We have the project management course where we look at uh, management aspects of large scale systems. We have verification, validation and testing, which looks at testing from a life cycle perspective. We have the systems optimization course where we teach optimization techniques for complex system problems. Decision and risk analysis is an important course where uh, we teach you decision models and risk analysis techniques uh, for dealing with uh, uncertainty and risk. Uh, and creativity and problem solving course uh, is uh, one of our uh, favorite courses among, of our, uh, among our students where you look at uh, advanced problem solving techniques. Uh, we have the problem solving leadership where you look at leadership aspects of uh, you know, engineering complex systems. Uh, we have based system engineering where we teach uh, contemporary model based system engineering methods uh, for analysis of systems. We have invention and creative design where you look at design thinking leading to invention and creative design. And we also have the software system architecture course where we look at uh, system architecting techniques. So once you are done with your courses, uh, you, we do require you to apply your knowledge from the program to a capstone experience. Uh, here you have two options. Uh, if you want to work independently, you have the option to work with one of our faculty and develop new insights in the field of systems engineering uh, and write a research paper uh, from that perspective. Or you also have the option of doing a, a team project uh, where you work on uh, defining, architecting and designing a cyber physical heterogeneous uh, complex engineering system. Uh, so those are your two options uh, where you apply your knowledge from the program uh, to uh, to the uh, to different applications. Uh, so that's I think pretty much about our systems engineering program. Uh, I also want to uh, note that uh, we are in the process of uh, reorganizing and uh, redefining our systems engineering program. Uh, so uh, in fall uh, 2020, uh, we will uh, have a revised version of our systems engineering program where uh, we are focusing on emphasizing some of the needs uh, coming from our uh, you know, uh, students. Uh, so uh, that's something to keep in mind as well. Uh, and we can discuss about that if you have any questions uh, from uh, that as well. So let's move on to our engineering management program. Uh, engineering management program, uh, our program focuses on preparing students in learning analytical tools and approaches to solving technical and socio-technical problems. 
leading technical people, fostering effective teams and managing technical projects uh, in the presence of uncertainty and risk. Uh, the engineering management program is a 33 credit program. 21 credits are allocated to core courses and 20, 12 of those credits are allocated to electives. Uh, let's look at uh, some of the core courses. Uh, so economics and financial studies for engineers, as the name refers uh, here in this course, you are looking at economic models and financial analysis uh, to solve uh, complex uh, technical problems. Engineering management science, uh, we are looking at analytical tools to solve uh, some of the uh, technical problems uh, seen in organizations. Uh, decision and risk analysis in engineering. Uh, again, here you are looking at uh, decision models, risk analysis tools uh, to deal with uncertainty and risk. Creativity and problem solving looks at uh, team dynamics, problem solving techniques uh, to leading to creativity and problem solving. Creativity and problem solving too is looking at advanced techniques uh, and leadership aspects of uh, problem solving. And technical project management is dealing with uh, how you deal with uh, project management aspects uh, of uh, technical organizations. So once you are done with the core courses, uh, you need to pick four electives from a prescribed list of uh, electives. Uh, here you can uh, tailor your program based on your interests. So if you are more interested in leadership aspects, uh, of uh, engineering management. You can take invention and creative design, ethics uh, and values in science and technology, problem solving leadership, engineering law, leadership across the lifespan. If you are interested more in the uh, design, engineering design aspects, you can take systems thinking, systems optimization, invention and creative design courses. Fundamentals of Continuous Improvement, where we look at uh, Lean Six Sigma aspects. Uh, or if you are interested in uh, information science uh, or you are working in an IT environment, uh, you might be interested in taking enterprise architecture, data-driven decision-making, and strategies for big data. So this is where you'll be able to tailor based on your interests. Let's move on to the next slide. So uh, we also require you to take a, a capstone project course uh, and we call this engineering management strategy. Here you work in teams to develop critical thinking and strategic thinking, uh, looking into different engineering technology management cases. Our faculty here uh, collaborate with local industry around here and they do uh, you know, they are successful in securing uh, real life case studies uh, where you'll be able to uh, work on real uh, problems and apply the engineering management uh, techniques uh, to solve uh, these problems. Uh, so that's uh, our uh, capstone project where you'll be able to apply your knowledge uh, in a specific real uh, world application. Uh, we have graduate certificates. The one that I would like to talk about is the systems engineering certificate. Let's say you are not sure about the uh, master's program. You can start with the certificate program and then uh, maybe move on to the master's program if you are interested in. So our systems engineering certificate is a 12 credit certificate where uh, you apply system engineering principles across the product development or acquisition life cycle. Uh, so uh, within the certificate, we have three core courses, the systems engineering course, the systems verification validation testing course and requirements engineering course. And once you take these courses, uh, you can take one uh, elective from a list of prescribed uh, courses. These are systems optimization, uh, modeling courses, probabilistic modeling and deterministic modeling decision and risk analysis in engineering, creativity and problem solving, invention and creative design. So that's uh, the graduate certificate in systems engineering. So uh, that pretty much covers uh, in a nutshell uh, the uh, basics of our programs. Uh, so I'll uh, forward it to Denita so she can talk about uh, the application process and then we can move on to your questions.
Thank you, Dr. Ergen. Um, so what is the next step? So for more information on the programs that Dr. Ergen discussed, uh, we encourage you to visit our website, www.greatvalley.psu.edu. Um, if you're ready to begin the application, you can apply online at www.gradschool.psu.edu slash apply. And if you have any further questions um, that aren't covered today, feel free to reach out to me afterwards at drw115 at psu.edu. Um, the application process is entirely online. Um, you would upload a current resume. Um, you want as much detail as possible. Um, there's a one page statement of intent where you would discuss your career goals, what it is that you want to accomplish with your master's degree from Penn State. Um, we also ask for you to upload your transcripts for any schools that you've attended. Um, so that's uploaded directly to the, to the application. And then last would be your recommendation. So uh, we ask for you to supply just the email address. We don't need an actual letter, but just the email address of your recommender. Ideally, this should be your supervisor, um, a director, manager, um, VP, something along those lines, someone that can speak that can speak to your ability to complete the program. Um, and also please note the GRE is not required to apply for either program. Neither program requires the GRE or GMAT. If you've taken either test and want to submit your scores, um, they will be reviewed, but it is not a requirement. And as far as GPA, typically uh, we like to see something in the 3.0 range. Um, if, if you fall uh, a bit short of a 3.0, I wouldn't let that discourage you. It's the entire, it's the strength of your entire application that's reviewed for consideration. So at this point, I'm going to stop talking and allow you to compile any questions that you have for either Dr. Ergen or I to answer. Um, so let's just give you a, a, a couple minutes to do so. Okay, Dr. Ergen, we have a question. Um, someone would like to know if they have no years of experience and are coming straight for, um, from undergraduate school, can they still apply? Uh, yes, they can apply. I mean, don't be discouraged about that. Uh, it's, uh, we are looking at the whole portfolio. Uh, so your internships also count. Uh, so that, that is not a definite requirement, work experience. We do prefer uh, that you have work experience, uh, but it's uh, definitely not a drawback uh, in your application process. So definitely. Thank you. And can you also tell us um, students that do come with experience um, in systems engineering and engineering management? Like what are some of the backgrounds that you see? Uh, yeah, uh, both our engineering management and systems engineering programs, we have a diverse uh, range of backgrounds coming from different engineering backgrounds, math and science backgrounds. Uh, in systems engineering, uh, we have mechanical engineers, electrical engineers, uh, chemical engineers, 
uh, so it's a diverse uh, range of uh, students and uh, in terms of their work experience in systems engineering most of our system engineering students come from uh, you know aerospace uh, and uh, you know large uh, system integrator companies like Boeing uh, Lockheed Martin and uh, contractors working for DOD uh, and uh, for the engineering management program uh, most of our students again come from engineering background uh, also math background so uh, technical background experience uh, is something common in them uh, but it's diverse and interdisciplinary that's the nature of both of these disciplines with the engineering management program, our students are more, fo more focused on being or becoming uh, leaders uh, in their uh, organizations, like maybe managing a team or becoming a director. Uh, so it's more on the leadership aspects of it. Uh, but, you know, we do get this question a lot, by the way, you know, what's the difference between an MBA and engineering management? With engineering management, uh, we emphasize technical analytical skills for solving uh, you know technical uh, problems yes uh, management aspects are important so we do uh, have courses that cover management and leadership aspects but we also require you to use analytical skills to solve these problems so that's one of the major differences when you are deciding if you want to go to mba or engineering management uh, we do require you, you to be comfortable with using analytical skills in engineering management as well as systems engineering. Thank you. And we have another question about how are classes scheduled for part-time students who work during the day? Uh, our classes are uh, running in evening time from 6 p.m. to 9 p.m. Uh, and uh, these are seven week uh, semesters. Uh, so we have, uh, for example, in fall semester, fall one and fall two semester. And uh, so if uh, you are uh, a student here, you would come uh, twice a week uh, and uh, meet uh, with your class. Uh, and uh, that would pretty much uh, have been working uh, comfortable with our working professionals so far. So it's evening classes uh, and uh, we also have, and we are moving towards a hybrid format. So, you know, uh, especially in our systems engineering program, our, most of our students travel a lot and that uh, has become uh, quite widespread among our students. So we are moving into a hybrid format where uh, you know you'll be able to come to our campus once a week and meet with the instructor uh, for three hours during the evening time 6 p.m to 9 p.m and then uh, th throughout the rest of the week work on our online program uh, so we have uh, for both systems engineering and engineering management our online program is also running through world campus so you'll be uh, you know uh, benefiting from both worlds uh, meeting with the instructor face to face as well as uh, you know uh, having the flexibility of working online uh, during the rest of the week uh, so uh, what if you are interested in, in our systems engineering program, uh, that's going to be a hybrid format uh, where you, you will have more flexibility as a working professional. Thank you. And can you speak a little about uh, research opportunities for students to participate in? Uh, yeah, uh, as I mentioned before, all of our faculty are active researchers. We do have uh, three active research groups, uh, as I mentioned at the very beginning of the presentation. Uh, so if you are interested, uh, you will be able to uh, work uh, with our faculty uh, and work on a research, uh, you know, in the research area of our faculty, uh, write a research paper for the systems engineering, uh, even for engineering management students, we do have that option. We have a part time uh, research assistant positions uh, where uh, you will be able to work with our faculty members. Thank you. Um, someone has asked about um, since classes are in the evening, is that still considered full time? And I can speak on that. Um, so someone is an international student and can only be enrolled full time. We do have many international students here um, who are studying on student visas. 
and a requirement of that is that they be enrolled full time. So although, um, so Dr. Ergen mentioned that our classes are held in the evening, um, you, that's still, you can still be considered full time. It's a matter of how many credits you're taking per semester. So a full time course load would be nine or more credits within a semester. Um, and those classes are held at night, just like our part time students take classes at night. So you can be an international student here enrolled full time taking classes in the evening. Um, we, we have added some, uh, not a large amount, but we have added a small amount of classes in the daytime to accommodate international students. Um, but the majority of your courses will be held in the evening. Um, we have another question. Is there an early admission decision for international students? Um, and are there any scholarship opportunities for international students? Um, the, the deadline, the application deadline for our international students is April 30th. So if you're planning to apply for fall 2020, you want to get your application in by April 30th. And I encourage you to get it in um, sooner rather than later. Um, I wouldn't wait till April 30th. I would try to get it in as soon as possible because um, in relation to the next part of your question, um, the scholarships are given out on a first come first serve basis. So the sooner you submit your application, the better your chances are of receiving a scholarship. And those scholarship opportunities are for international students as well as non-international students. Um, it's your application for admission that is reviewed for scholarship consideration. So you don't need to submit a separate scholarship application. Um, scholarships are awarded based on merit. So based on your based on the strength of your application. And again, you want to apply as soon as possible for that scholarship consideration. Um, for our full time students, our scholarships are in the amount of $10,000 and $15,000. And for part time students, the scholarships are in the amount of $2,500 and $5,000. We're going to pause again to allow for additional questions. Okay, we have some great questions coming in. Um, someone would like to know, Dr. Ergen, um, they, they have a Bachelor of Science in Business, um, but work for Boeing in the Systems Engineering Department. Can this person still apply for the systems program? Uh, yes, definitely. Uh, work experience is uh, related to systems engineering program. Uh, but I also would like to emphasize uh, with BS in business, uh, we would look into your transcript. If you have taken calculus one and calculus two, uh, that's, uh, that's a plus. But if you haven't, uh, we would recommend you to take uh, calculus one and calculus two uh, for engineers uh, from a community college or a MOOC course online. Uh, and uh, submit that with your application as well. Uh, because our pro in our program, we do have a couple of uh, simulation and math courses that do require engineering background or calculus background. Uh, we want you to be successful. Uh, so we would recommend, strongly recommend you to have some background if you, if you don't have it in your transcript, calculus one and calculus two uh, in your, uh, transcript uh, as well. Thank you, Dr. Ergen. Um, someone would like to know the how many courses are covered 
um, for a part-time student per semester? And does the summer sem is the summer semester available for part-time students? So I can speak on that. So like I mentioned, nine or more credits is a full-time course load. So anything under nine credits is part-time. Our part-time students here typically take three or six credits within a semester, and that's equal to one or two classes. So our semesters here are split into two seven-week sessions, and we have six sessions throughout the year, uh, fall one and two, spring one and two, summer one and two. So most part-time students might take just one class per session, meaning one class in fall one, one class in fall two, or some might only take one class within the whole semester, maybe going fall one, and skipping fall two, but three or six credits or one or two classes within a semester is a part-time course load. We do offer a summer semester. Um, any students can take advantage of that, but please note the summer offerings are a bit more limited than fall or spring, only because many students choose to take off their summer semester. So we do offer fewer courses in the summer, but there, or, but there are courses available for those who choose to go uh, during the summertime. I'm going to pause and allow for a few more questions. Okay, we have a great question. Um, when students get the opportunity to be part of research, does that help cover some of their tuition? Um, yes, so our research assistant positions are wage payroll positions. So students receive an hourly pay for their research work um, and that can help supplement their tuition. Another question, uh, what are the prerequisite courses needed for systems engineering and also engineering management. Dr. Ergen, I'll turn that over to you. Uh, yeah, uh, as I mentioned before, for systems engineering, uh, we want you to have some uh, calculus background, calculus one and calculus two for engineers. And for the engineering management program, uh, we also want you to have some uh, mathematical background. So we look at calculus one, uh, if you have that in your transcript. If you don't have it, uh, again, don't be discouraged about it. We look at your work experience uh, if it's relevant, but uh, we want or we strongly recommend you to take uh, those courses uh, from MOOC online or uh, community colleges just for you to be successful. Another question, how many classes are mandatory for the first semester? So if you're a part-time student, there is no mandatory amount of classes that you need to take. Um, our part-time students stop in and stop out um, as, as needed. Um, if you're a full-time student, if you're required to maintain a full-time course load, then you need to maintain at least nine credits per semester. Um, and that would be equal to three classes. We have another question um, for the engineering management capstone. Is that done on campus? Um, you mentioned that students get to work on real life case studies. So are students responsible to apply for, for internships to finish the capstone project or does the school already have a place for them to, to help in that capstone project? Uh, yeah, I can answer that question. Uh, so with the capstone course, it is done on campus. Uh, you are not required to find an internship to be able to finish the capstone project. Our faculty, uh, you know, successfully arranges a real life case study in collaboration with uh, our local industries around here. Uh, so uh, all you need to do is be 
on campus, work with your team, uh, and work towards the capstone project. Thank you, Dr. Ergen. Um, and I will just, um, just also add, regarding internships, we do have a career management office that assists students as they look for internships. Um, as Dr. Ergen they mentioned, they are not a requirement for the program. You're not required to find an internship, but we do have some students who, would, who are seeking internship opportunities. Um, so we, our career management counselor shares opportunities that come in, um, work opportunities, internship opportunities with our students. Um, the office also provides a career fair that's held on campus, bringing area companies in that are looking to hire our students. Um, and we also run a, a, a bus to our University Park campus, which is our much larger campus, um, where a larger scale career fair is held there twice a year. Um, so we do transport students to that career fair as well. So while we don't place students in internships, we do provide them with, um, with opportunities for students to explore on their own if they are seeking an internship. going to give it a couple more minutes because the questions seem to be still rolling in. So um, please just take this last few minutes to compile any remaining questions you might have. Okay, we have a question. Is there training provided in the end semester for students like OPT? Um, so for OPT, um, our students who are seeking internship opportunities for OPT, um, like I mentioned, we do not place students in those positions, but our career management office provides students with the resources for them to explore, um, providing them with opportunities to be exposed to companies and providing them with job leads. Um, but it's up to the student to explore those opportunities. Um, and the question, are there any other scholarships available that students can apply for? Is it only the, or is it only the merit-based scholarship that was mentioned earlier? Um, so we have the admission scholarship for part-time or full-time students. And that's what I mentioned um, you're automatically considered for when you submit your application by the, by the prescribed due dates. Uh, we do also have, there's a Musser Fellowship, um, but there are guidelines for that fellowship. That's for any students who are interested in entrepreneurial aspirations, whether it's starting your own company, your own business, your own service, um, but those, anyone who applies for that fellowship cannot be employed. It's for students who are not working, who want to um, expand on their own entrepreneurial goals. Um, and then once, once students are enrolled, we do have, um, there are need-based scholarships for in currently enrolled students. Um, and then we also have a link to some outside scholarships on our website as well. So I would encourage you to explore our, um, our, our 
to our, our financial aid page on our website, which, which lists the, the, the scholarships, I'm sorry. Um, in regards to seeking funding opportunities, are there other opportunities that cover the full tuition? Um, like I mentioned, we do have those scholarships available and the fellowship available. None of them cover full tuition, um, but there are some partial scholarships that are available on our website. So I would encourage you to explore those. Give you a couple couple more seconds. We had one last question, whether uh, international students are eligible for the entrepreneurial um, fellowship that I mentioned. Yes, they are. And that's called the Musser Fellowship. You'll find that on our webpage under um, tuition and scholarships. I'm sorry, under the tuition and financial aid tab. Again, it's called the Musser Fellowship. So at this point, I just want to thank all of you for joining us. And I wanna thank Dr. Ergen for her time today. Um, I hope that you found this webinar to be informative. And also one last thing that I want to mention, in addition to reaching out to me, if you have any additional questions, um, I can also place you in, um, in touch with some of our current students um, and alumni, if you'd like to um, ask a question and have, have the alumni or student point of view. We do have students who are, who are more than willing to connect with you. So if that's something that you would like, please just shoot me an email um, and you know, letting me know that you would like to be connected to a student or an alumni. And again, my email address is on the screen. It's drw115 at psu.edu. And again, thank you so much for joining us today. And thank you, Dr. Ergen. Thank you.